So we've gotten very interested in this phenomenon called, we've come to label, retrieval-induced forgetting. So uh, Michael Anderson, who was then a graduate student working with Elizabeth Bjork and me, got interested in this general idea that as we retrieve some information in response to cues, other things become inaccessible. And so he came up with a sort of simple idea of uh, how we might explore that. And a number of experiments later, and now uh, 17 years later, uh, there's been research all around the world on retrieval-induced forgetting. So in the original paradigm, it was quite simple. We had people study um, eight members uh, actually, I guess it was six members of eight different categories. So they would discuss, they would study six fruits and six professions and six vehicles. And then they went through a retrieval practice phase. And this has sometimes come to be called now the retrieval practice paradigm. And on this retrieval practice phase, they would see a cue like fruit, a couple letters like uh, O-R, and they would say, what fruit that you studied began with the letters O-R. This is made pretty easily. They would come up with orange. Now, the sort of trick, so to speak, was we had them practice half the members of half the categories several times each. So you might recall orange and pear and apricot, say, uh, but not the other members of the category. And so half the members had that sort of practice half weren't practiced at all. And then later, people were given the category Q, uh, sometimes initial first letters as well, and just asked to recall everything they had studied. Now, the striking thing was not that there were positive effects that you recalled orange better if you had practiced it, but that you recalled the unpracticed members of, say, the fruit category worse than you did these categories that weren't practiced at all. And this was kind of shocking from several respects because, for one thing, <clears throat> you might assume that I, when I'm trying to recall fruit and I see some cue, I would think of, that would activate all the things I studied. So the one I retrieved would get a bigger boost than the ones I didn't, but it would somehow have a positive effect on all of those versus if during this retrieval practice phase I never present the professions or vehicles category at all, you would think there'll be small advantages for the unpracticed ones as well as big advantages for the practiced ones, but that was not it. You're impaired. Now there's arguments to this day, pretty vigorous arguments as to how this is coming about. The view we favor is that when you see a cue like fruit OR, you select orange to recall, but you have to select against apple, uh, pear, peach, whatever else you studied. And selecting to not recall those, in our view, is an inhibitory process that, at least for a while, makes them less accessible. So there's been great interest in this, both because not everybody agrees with this theoretical perspective. The alternative is I just make orange so prominent that it gets in the way or blocks access later. And so there's a kind of vigorous debate. Uh, we are convinced with this uh, selection plus suppression idea for a number of reasons, but many researchers around the world uh, are not so convinced. But it points to this kind of critical interplay of how our memories sort of work, how using our memories shapes our memories. And uh, I think that's one interest, and uh, this is spread to things as diverse as, could this be a mechanism for <clears throat> uh, repression kind of things? You know, that I, I um, don't want to think about certain things from my past. I prefer to think about happy events in my family and uh, happy things I did with my dad or whatever 
And the idea would be that over time I keep retrieving those and other incidents that weren't happy and might have even been abusive could become uh, less accessible. And if maybe if this goes on long enough, quite inaccessible. Um, in our own lab, we haven't pursued that much, but uh, Michael Anderson and other researchers have examined that. And uh, that again triggers quite strong interest from one aspect or another. People uh, thinking maybe that is a mechanism for repression versus people thinking that something as salient as an abuse incident uh, can't be, can't be lost, the memories for that can't be lost. So uh, there's just been a lot of reasons why this relatively simple paradigm in evidence for reduced and forgetting has, has uh, triggered so much interest.